All right, and welcome back to the channel, everybody, and I hope you're doing fine. Today, we're going to talk about the new event that is going to release, hopefully tomorrow, Tide of Shadows, which is the new summer event. And as I mentioned already, the event start time is going to be 11 a.m. Central European summer time, 28th of June. Uh, keep in mind, they also want to roll out 1.13 tomorrow, so there will be a maintenance window. Maybe it will start a little bit later than 11 a.m. Let's see. And it's going to end the 23rd of August, 9 a.m. Central European summertime. There's gonna be a lot. We're gonna talk today about the new wild target Rod Joe, so the new boss. We're gonna talk about the new event specific traits. We're also gonna talk about a new, you know, daytime setting, Thunder Shower. New wild card condition. Awesome! New guns, ammo and consumables and also a little bit about the battle pass. Although I think I will handle the battle pass in a different video. But here we go. Alright, I think it's safe to say that we waited a long time for Gator and Hunt Showdown. And here we go, Rot John. It's gonna be a new boss and uh, with a few twists though. She lives in open waters, yes, confirmed by lore that that is a girl actually. Uh, not in buildings like ever, only in water. Uh, what is important to tell you though is, because a lot of people wanted a roaming boss, that's not gonna be a roaming boss. So you have to track her down and once you know the location, he's gonna stay there and you have to fight there. She works like a regular boss, so that means when you banish her, you get your health bars back. And the banish time until you can pick up the token is, well, half the time of the regular bosses. And only one token can be looted, not two. Currently, uh, she is only on wildcard maps. This is important to mention. We're gonna talk about the wildcard maps in a bit. So yeah, I hope you will have fun with Rotjaw. I think she will be quite challenging at the beginning, but maybe we're gonna do a little bit of a guide to explain in a couple of days how you can defeat her rather easily. Okay, next I would say we have a look at the event traits. And oh boy, oh boy, there's gonna be a lot to talk about it. So first of all, we had it already during the last event that there were traits that you could gather at certain supply points with uh, pledge marks. There will be new packs. So we have an old one coming back that is grounded, but we're also gonna get Primal and Smuggler. To activate these packs, you need pledge marks. Some hunters, and we had it already in the past, are already pre-pledged, so you can have only certain packs for them. There's gonna be a list though, uh, with the patrons and everything, where you can see which hunters will have which pack. You still need to gather the pledge marks though. During one mission, you can gather at max three pledge marks. You can carry four in total. That means they carry over from the first game to the second game and you can just maybe, you know, get event points for your pledge mark, extract, do the next mission again until you have the max of four. So you don't have to get them all in one mission. There are multiple sources to get these pledge marks. First one is gather event points. Once you have 20, you get one pledge mark. Also, the first hunter that you loot in a match gives you a pledge mark. And also, the first banish that you do gives you a pledge mark. There you go. It doesn't matter how many hunters lo you loot in terms of pledge marks, not for event points. And it also doesn't matter if there's like one or two bosses. Only one banish counts. Then, so, you need to know now though, how can you get these event points? And there's a lot of ways to do that. So first of all, we have these event clues and event rifts. They give six points. Banishing a boss gives 10 and extracting with a token gives 20. I'm actually not sure, I think, it's just token extraction, so it doesn't matter if it's one, two, three, or four. Uh, and we have these ship altars. Interacting, four points. Destroying, two points. We have that already with the shrines, you know, with these uh, encaged souls during the last event. Destroying them is loud, right? There's an explosion that dealt moderate damage and it applied bleed. I think we're gonna talk about that in a second, though. Looting a hunter gives you eight points. So if you loot a lot of hunters and you do a lot of PvP, you get a lot of event points. Winning the Soul Survivor mode gives you 20. That also enables the pledge mark then. Challengers, they will give some event points too, but they vary, so I don't have exact numbers right here. And the Dark Tribute, the first daily milestone gives you 150. 150 is actually, that is quite a bit. Then, we talked already about these ship altars. 
they are our current event objects and they will probably be gone again after the event. Interacting gives more EP, like event points. It's also the quiet way to do it, because when you shoot them, they explode, you can hear that very far, and you have a small radius where this thing deals moderate damage. I can't remember how much it was with the captured souls in the last one, but I think it was close to 100 damage. And uh, at least medium bleed. So be careful when you attack with them, there's somebody out there shooting that thing. Um, they also work like clues, so they start glowing and making these warning sound effects when enemies are nearby. That's nice because then it's harder to camp these things when you want to, you know, silently go over there, interact it for juicy event points and then uh, you get shot because you had no idea that in the bush next to you there's somebody sitting. Let's talk about the pack traits as well. The pledge post is where you can get the packs or where you do the packs. They are always at supply points, it's been like that also the last event. However, there's a little bit of a change now because the event traits, you must pick them separately. You're not getting them automatically by pledging. Once pledged, there will be traits visible. You can't see them before that. There are different packs and they have different traits. You only see the traits that are available for your pack. Now, you go over then to the trade, it tells you how many pledge marks the trade costs. You sacrifice the pledge marks and then you get the trade. Keep in mind that the trade charm will be removed then, but only for you. So if somebody else comes and they have the same pact, it's gonna still be there. So these traits that spawn once you have your pact trade side, only you can see them. So if a team comes to the uh, pledge post and they all have the same pact contract, they all can still get the same trade. But then it's destroyed for everybody. If you want to have the trade again, then you have to go to a different pledge post, if I understand it correctly. You have also now burn trades, and this is something that I'm really looking forward to because this will balance the trades quite a bit. Burn trades are our single use, and that is a huge balance impact actually. Once the effect gets triggered, the trait gets removed again from the hunter and doesn't stay there the whole time. You just have to go back to the pledge posts, buy the trait again. If you already visited that certain pledge post, you have to go to a different one because the trait is gone. And you have to keep in mind that you need again pledge marks to buy it again. I hope I could explain this somewhat Understandably, I really hope so. Now, we're not done here though. We still have to talk about the specific pacts. Okay, there's three. Let's start with the first one and that is the primal pact. You have two traits for this one. The first one is called instinct and costs one pledge mark. That means in dark side, you can sense when enemy hunters are around. And the range is 75 meters. Now you're probably like, Jesus Christ, is it like having dark side and you can see actually an orange blob. No, that's not how it works. Remember when you go into dark side, you have like that vignette effect at the border of your screen. That is not black anymore. That will turn slightly orange if I remember this correctly. And you also have a different audio cue. This seems to be quite strong. Honestly, normally you have a boss anyway, telling you when it's turning red and the uh, clues turn red, but this will be Especially for solos, if you tapped it regularly, it would be tough to ambush you. So this is going to be a really good one. Of course, keep in mind this is all theory crafting right now because I didn't play that yet myself. And on live server, it's going to probably be a little bit different. So maybe it's not as strong as I assume. The other trait for the primal pack is relentless. That one costs two pledge marks and it's a burn trait. The hunter won't lose the health chunk went down. So similar to the Moon Pact, I think it was called the last time, the last event. This is good when you fight in teams, they pick you up, you still have all the bars, so you're not a one tap to long ammo, or if you lost 50, you're one tap to basically everything. So nice. However, that only works now once per match, or maybe twice per match, if you only go for that one, because you have to get the pledge marks again to rebuy the trade. I think this is necessary though, because the first one is already a pretty huge deal in my opinion. Let's have a look at the other packs though. We have the Smuggler Pact, Marina, one pledge marked, first trade. 
Health regenerates faster while in water. Okay, so lots of stuff is water-based now. I mean, who would have guessed uh, about this event? Then health regenerates slightly faster in heavy rain. Okay, it's not much, but over time you might feel it. And uh, the crazy part about the smuggle pack is because so far you're like, uh, this is kind of meh, right? But the health regeneration goes past bar borders. So yes, this is like a region shot as long as you're wet. I know there's a mom joke somewhere here, but I'm gonna restrain myself. <laughs> the second trait is Gunrunner that costs two pledge marks. And that is, I don't know, for me personally, this will not have a lot of effect, but no contraband weapons on extraction. So when you trade weapons with somebody that you killed, normally when you extract, they are not, uh, they, they are contraband, sorry. And with this trait, they will not be contraband anymore. I didn't see that in person myself yet, but I assume this will also repair scopes because they are not contraband anymore. This has nothing to do with the dirt. No contraband scope means not cracked. Also, with the patch 1.13 coming, they're not dirty anyway, so... Yeah, you will be able to sell them and the scope should be fixed. It's a burn trade though. Honestly, I don't know if you want to get that one, but the first one is insane and I think the second trade is more of a bonus on top. One more though, we have the grounded pack and you're like, oh my god, the thing was OP last time. I don't know the exact numbers, but I think almost everybody took it, like 80% or something like that. <sighs> Shadow is coming back, one pledge mark, monsters can hear but not see you. That is kind of cool because when you try to get some distance to other people and you run through a compound, you trigger all the AI and they're not following you. And they will attack, hopefully, if the enemies doesn't ha don't have Shadow, they will attack the enemy. You can also trigger like emulators, make them run around and stuff like that, but not really that great. It's more for doing fast flanks and to quickly get some distance to enemy hunters. Keep in mind the bosses are immune to this trait, obviously, because otherwise you could cheese them. Then we have Remedy, two pledge marks, and that's a burn trait again. With Dark Side, you interact with a trait. Okay, so use Dark Side. You have 25 meter range with that one. It's not on the slider actually, but let me tell you it's 25 meters. You don't need Serpent for that, by the way. And it triggers a restoration effect similar to Banishing for your team. And it's not destroying the trait that you're doing it with. So it can be a trait that a meter drop. It can be a trait that you found on a box. And it can also be a trait, I think, from... Um, the packed stations. Yeah, I mean, it's a burn trait. And again, you can only get three pledge marks on a map. So you can do that only once or twice when you carry over pledge marks from the previous match to restore the bars of your group. Um, yeah, we will have to see how crazy this is because on paper for team play, this sounds very very strong especially i don't know if there's gonna be an effect a visual one that people did that because well if they find in a compound find in a compound fight a trade one of them can use that you will not realize that and suddenly they're not body taps anymore after getting downed once uh yeah this will be this will be interesting for team play this will be absolutely crazy your team can move fast and you can restore the traits uh, the bars. Mostly out of combat though, I guess. Alright. Then we have Death Cheat. <laughs> and the uh, Death Cheat was the reason why most of the people picked Grounded during the last event. Now, it costs three pledge marks. And the Hunter is not lost. It means if you fail to extract, be it timer or you got killed, you get the Hunter back. The gear is lost though. And also all the bars that you lost, you need to rebuy them with skill points. Now you're like, oh wow, Grounded is becoming again the most picked pack because it's the best. Da, 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 da. Death Cheat is available for all packs. Whew, so this is it uh, with the trade from this event. And I have to say, Primer, yeah, that will be pretty nice for solos that don't take a lot of damage. It's gonna be borderline impossible to ambush that guy. We also have then our beautiful, what is that again? The Smuggler Pact, 
with the permanent region shot as long as there's water and heavy rain. This is important. We're going to talk about this now in a second. There's heavy and light rain. So during the light rain, you will not have the regeneration. And we have the grounded pack, which overall is like for team play, might be a really good one. Let's see. Okay, and then death sheet is for everybody, which is pretty effing cool. That's it with the traits. Let's talk a little bit about rain. Okay, we talked already a little bit about rain. Let's dive deep into the topic. Thunder shower. It's a wildcard condition and it's sort of dynamic weather. Uh, you have heavy rain where you, it's, <laughs> it's really hard to see actually and it's also harder to hear. But steps and gunshots. Now there's a small chance that the map starts with heavy rain, but normally the maps will start with light rain. And the rain alternates between light and heavy rain. Like heavy rain is most of the time just for a couple of minutes. So I think there will be more light rain and heavy rain will only be a couple of times during the full match timer. Will be nice though if you have to push or if you engage somebody with Dragon Breath, then maybe you wait for that. Because heavy rain, yeah, has quite the effect on gameplay. So let's talk about that. So hunters, dead or alive, cannot start burning. Yeah, I don't know how good that is, because uh, the only way to really get rid of solos is fire. You burn them out and then uh, that's it. Or even as a solo, when the teammate is running away, to bring him back, my only way to push him or to force him to make a move is burning his teammate. I can't do that when it's raining. So is this maybe Hunt Showdown 2023 the time of the liquid firebomb? Because you still receive fire damage while standing in flame. So even if you if they cannot set you on fire, you will still get the charcoal effect damage. And the liquid firebomb should burn long enough to actually kill people. Is it it? Is this it? The time where liquid firebomb is not a meme anymore? Whew. Let's see, I have to test it myself. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this. Then heavy rain stops burning. This is exactly what I meant with uh, Dragon Breath, but also incendiary runs or alert trip mines and whatever. If they ignite you and you're burning in a building and you run outside and there's heavy rain, the fire will stop. Another cute detail is that crows will take off. Now that's kind of cool because you can't hear footsteps that far, there are no more crows, so that means you can really double you across the map and gain some distance fast and not a lot of people will hear you because you don't have to care about crows. Also, all the other sound traps like ducks or Cannons, they react later. It's similar as, you know, you would have Beast Face. I don't know if it stacks though, so I don't know what happens when you have Beast Face during Heavy Rain. Maybe you can pet the dogs then in the kennel, but I wouldn't do it in the first place. Uh, yeah, let's see. Also, Alert Trip Mines, they do trigger, but they have no effect. So if you place them outside, Heavy Rain starts, somebody runs in there, the wire snaps, they are basically consumed and triggered, but there, there will be no sound effect and you will not set the hunter on fire once you place there too. As you know, you can set them on fire. One is not doing much. So yeah, alert trip mines, nerfed into the ground, game unplayable, I'm sure I'm dead. <coughs> Kappa. Alright, then. Uh, there will be more wildcard contracts though. And they will be active slash inactive during the event. We had it already last time with the Inferno map that the Inferno was only available during certain days. So it might be that when the event comes tomorrow, there is no rain. <laughs> so, uh, and then that means there's also no boss. Uh, that would be a shame, honestly. So I hope we can see the new boss tomorrow. Otherwise, yeah, but we will see. They did it last time, but now with the boss, I think everybody's waiting for so long. Come on, Crytek, give us a boss, all right? They will announce it when um, the wildcard contracts will be available on their socials or also on Steam. So if you are in the Hunchrow on Discord or, well, you always have the Steam page, then uh, you can see it over there. We will have three wildcard contracts, Thunder Shower, Serpent's Night, and Night. 
So Rain is only doing Thunderstorm, but Rot Jaw is doing all three. So the moment you queue into the wildcard contract, there is a chance that um, you will have Rain, but Rot Jaw is 100%. Okay, I think I covered most of the wildcard stuff right now. Keep in mind, didn't play it yet myself, so I scramble around the information that uh, I could find, but also what Crytek provided for me. All right, but there's still more to talk. There's so much because we have a crap ton of new guns and gimmicks. And here we go. I think this is probably, at least for me, uh, the most anticipated gun in a long time. The drilling rifle. So, two medium rifle barrels and one under barrel shotgun. The shotgun is almost as powerful as the Romero. Yeah, that's great, uh, but it will have a longer reload time. The ammo that is available for the drilling rifle is Dum Dum, so the bleed rounds, and FMJ. It comes with 20 spare bullets, so that is quite Gucci, I have to say. The shotgun shell, well, that comes with some special ammo as well. You will have access to flechette, penny shot, and slugs. The ammo is rather limited, but I think, yeah, this will be dirty. Now, I expect the drilling rifle to be actually quite expensive. And yes, I'm aware of the fact that balancing by price is not great because lots of people don't care about money and you're only hurting the people who can afford it in the first place. I get that, but in the past it showed that increasing the price for a few things, yeah, it reduces the pick rate. Like for example with the officer and even a little bit with the uppercut lately. Okay, so uh, what do we think about this? Hmm? I think I will try this first with Dum Dum and Flechette and just turn this thing into a mid-range nightmare for everybody. Until everybody realizes, hey man, there's Bloodless trade and uh, they will take that one. And I think they will also reduce the price for Bloodless and for, what's it called? The other one, Soft Skin. I think from five to three. Let's see. I mean, fair enough because incendiary rounds will be quite annoying if you're not, you know, doing a thunderstorm out there. All right, so, whew, drilling. Yeah, dude. You could also take this with the flechette shotgun and then the FMJ medium slots, turning this almost in the double sparks barrel flechette shotgun. You tag them with the flechette once they take cover, you shoot them. It will be wild. I think the flechette on this barrel will have a range of uh, 40 or 60 meters. I need to test it in the shooting range soon. Yo, but that's not it. We get a little bit more. Now, next, we have the Railroad Hammer. I assume it's a medium slot. I'm not 100% sure here. Maybe it's just a small slot. But the axe is a medium slot, so... I think the assumption that this is a medium slot too is fair enough. Similar to Sledgehammer found in the world. Slightly less damage, though, than the Sledgehammer, but it consumes less stamina than Sledgehammer. Now, why do we need this? Well, we don't really need this, but a lot of people were asking for that. And I think as long as the heavy attack from the Railroad Hammer can kill an Immolator, then there is some play for this. Otherwise, I mean, you have to keep in mind some bosses are, you know, weak to certain melee damage types, like Scrap Beak to Piercing, Butcher to, to Rending, the Spider to Blunt Damage, so maybe there will be some use. I think it will be most of the time a meme, just like the heavy axe that you can already get. But uh, why the hell not? Maybe we can do some bonking, maybe we do some meme runs with that and play a double railroad hammer and yeah, this, this is gonna be bad, but maybe we do that. Now, uh, a little bit more serious though is the Lemat Mark II Upper Mat. Well, the name is maybe not that serious, but uh, <laughs> what the thing is capable of is sure as hell very, very intimidating. It's a medium slot and long ammo. Great. Nine shots like the base version. That is uh, quite crazy, I have to say. And uh, needs two hands to operate. That means no fanning for that one. Okay, I think balancing by medium slot is already kind of nice. Keep in mind, this thing has more penetration and a higher muzzle velocity than your regular Lamette because it's long ammo. And you have in total 18 shots, so nine, nine. You can use this with poison. And FMJ. Keep in mind, I never list the, you know, the basic ammo because that's kind of obvious. And uh, yeah, since it's an upper mat or a mat version, you have shotgun ammo for that. And that comes also with a few options. The Lamette ones, so that means Dragon Breath, 
Starshell and Slugs. So I'm always joking that uh, the regular uppercut is a pocket rifle. Now we have the upper mat, which is a pocket rifle. Medium slot. <laughs> uh, this will be interesting. You have long ammo for mid range. You have slugs for close range. You can't even do the dragon breath long ammo combo with the thing with a single gun. Now imagine you have the drilling together with the upper mat. Then you have double heavy bleed medium ammo. You will have a flechette shotgun shell, big barrel by the way. Then you will have a long ammo pistol for penetration with FMJ if you so desire. And then you have slugs on the thing for really close quarter combat. Now let's not talk about how effing expensive this loader will be, but holy crap man. I thought the Sign Svetterly together with a hand crossbow is the Swiss Army Knife of Hunt Showdown, but dang. Yeah, I think these times are over. This will be very interesting to play if you can afford it. Then, uh, uh, some something a little bit more chill. New Army Swift, we, we saw the teasers already in the leaks. It comes with a speed reloader, duh. Uh, you have to be careful though. It's the same with the regular Swift for the, what's it called, Scott Field. Unspent ammo will be lost during reload and it can be used for dual wheeling. I mean, why not? But just to be clear here. It has access to Dum Dum and FMJ comes with 612, so with the regular new army. We're also gonna have the Winfield 93 Slate Repost. Now keep in mind that a repost is not a bayonet from a gameplay mechanic point of view. Heavy attack with the repost and with the bayonet, they are the same, but the light attack with the bayonet, you take the rifle and punch people with the rifle. With the repost, it's like the Martini Henry post, you have the slash attack, the light attack that one shots grunts. So this might be nice. I'm not 100% sure how often I will take that because, well, it's a shotgun. I take bayonets or, you know, reposed weapons on shotguns. For example, with the Spectre bayonet, when I have flechette and dragon breath, where, you know, the chances of actually one-tapping people is rather low. And then you can use the bayonet for follow-up. So that is okay. Penny shot and slugs for that one, we know it already, five. Plus one nine, five plus one four. It, the plus one is basically because the gun is not fully loaded when you enter the match. What else do we have? We have the Dragon Bolt. Cute. Uh, so it's for the hand crossbow, a Dragon Breath shell. Bolt. It, <laughs> it explodes in a small fireball impact. The effect is like a firebomb, so it's only setting you on fire. And the fire duration is like a hellfire bomb. I try to, to be here as precise as possible. The duration from the hellfire, but it's not burning at 25 bar instantly, I think. And you don't get a lot from these, like Dragon Ball, you have one and three spare. Might be nice to set enemy hunters on fire when you do not have, you know, a lantern right next to you or a fire bomb or whatever. Maybe play this with Dragon Ball and Poison or Dragon Ball and regular. There are some options for this. Also, maybe this is good against spiders. Spiders weak to fire. We will have to test that. Then we have new ammo for the bomb lens. Waxed frag charge. Yeah, uh, it's an explosive lens with a wax coating. It detonates with a delayed fuse, causes bleed damage. Uh, we know that already from somewhere, am I right? Exactly, from the frag arrows. And they work similar, but these right here, they explode in water. So they will also go through choke bombs. They will not impale a target. I think they will bounce off the hunter and then explode. And wax frag charge is one and four spare. Now the main issue with this thing is though that the reload time on the bomb lands is forever during PvP. And both thrower is still not working for this one. So let's see how good it will actually be. Because you need to tag people and then finish them off when they're in cover. Getting two taps or maybe even three taps with that thing. It depends how, how strong the explosion is. With a frag arrow, you will need at least two good impacts. I mean, one, they really have to, you know, role play as a chicken sitting on an egg. Then it might kill them. Okay, but this will be interesting. I'll tell you, bomb lens matter or what and we have the choke beetle so we get a new beetle variant explodes into a cloud of suffocating gas 
or they explode into a cloud of suffocating gas. Now, that does not deal damage and it works like a choke bomb. Now, why should you use this? Because sometimes your godlike teammates who, you know, they know everything better than you and they play so much better than you, uh, die in a very dumb spot. Like you have to cross the open or maybe they died on a different level and it's difficult to choke bomb. You can actually switch to the beetle, fly to your teammate, suffocate them with the gas and put out the fire. Yeah, they will love that. But it's a nice play. You can also make people move. Uh, and normally, beetles cannot fly through choke bomb clouds. But this gas right here, they can fly through it. I don't know if that gas is a different color. Like the poison bomb is green and choke bomb is translucent. I don't know if this will have its own color. Maybe, let's see. Then we have two more things. We have the medical pack. Yeah, works like a world med kit. It's 100, two users, one per hunter. Nice support item for the team, that's it. Honestly, nice because you basically get two heal charges without doctor. So maybe if you cannot afford doctor yet, you take one of these, might be good. It depends how expensive they are. I don't know that yet. And then we also have the toolbox. Works like a toolbox. No shit, Mike. And you have two users, one per hunter. Nice support item for the team. There you go. I think I spoke about most ammo types, weapons, tools, consumables. Uh, there's one more topic that I want to cover in this video today, and that's going to be the battle pass. Battle pass. There we go. All right, final chapter for today. Video is already pretty long. We're going to talk about the battle pass. Now, before you're asking, Mike, why is there no opinion chapter this time? I want to hear your smart ass voice complaining. Thanks. Um, honestly, most of the stuff that I showed you today is info provided by Crytek. And I didn't play it myself yet. So there are a few info bits missing, like how expensive is stuff, how it plays. Sure, you can make a first impression, and I did that already while talking about uh, certain topics. But um, an opinion chapter, I would like to do that in a couple of days after playing with stuff. Because, yeah, hunt's gonna be dead, uh, everything's gonna be OP, blah, blah, blah. The cycle continues. Yeah, different video though. Then, battle pass. So there's gonna be one right now. They changed a little bit the pricing for it, so the regular one is like a thousand BBs. And then you have the Battle Pass bundle that's 3,150. But you get 10 levels and you also get the skin. Gonna be honest with you guys, uh, I'm not gonna be a hypocrite. I'm gonna buy the Battle Pass bundle because I wanna progress fast. Now keep in mind, content creator, right? So I wanna unlock things rather quickly, at least the first things, because I wanna showcase them in future videos. Otherwise, I think the regular Battle Pass is totally fine. You just played with that. If you do not buy anything here, you say, F it, I don't want this. Also fine. I mean, it's mostly skins and the icons, the icons, the items will be unlockable once the event is over. Now, I have to admit though, with the Centennial, the suppressed one, that was not ideal because 1.13 got delayed so much. It should be available for unlocking tomorrow though, if you missed it during the last event. That's, it's been a while. So yeah. That's it with the battle pass. Um, of course, now I could talk about the BB policy, the change and everything. But uh, I have a few projects that I want to do. First of all, we're going to talk about 1.13 because there were a few changes and I want to talk about that. And also about the impression about the event and the new stuff once I have some experience. I also want to do videos. You know what? Let's roll the outro first. Here we go. Yeah, because this has nothing to do with the battle pass anymore, am I right? Uh, I have a lot of things that I want to show and test. So I want to do a video about drilling rifle, about the upper mat. I save quite some money so I can play this, no problemo. And um, yeah, lots of topics that I would love to cover. Okay, I'm a little bit sorry on top, by the way, that uh, I could not show you clips or more pictures, actually. I would have loved to do that. But then... The video would have probably delayed quite a bit because I cannot stream and edit at the same time. That's not possible. And honestly, patch notes video or event videos, you drop it day one or as soon as possible because four or five days later, you don't need to do that anymore. But hey, I hope you're not too mad at me. Then, big shout out to my patrons right here. 
updated the wall, so it should be accurate right now. If not, reach out to me and uh, then I will fix that. Thank you very much for all the support. Thank you for watching. I hope you will have a lot of fun with the event. I hope I will enjoy it. As a solo, might be a little bit tough, but let's see. Gonna go live tomorrow as soon as the event starts. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, have a good day and bye-bye.